So I've hit record. Why I pray as we begin. Gracious God, we thank you that you are more willing to speak to us than we are to listen. And we thank you, Lord, for your compassion that reached out to save us and your compassion on those currently who are lost and perishing without you. Lord, that you, you want to save many more. And Lord, I pray this evening would be an encouraging and a fun time for us, that you'd help us, Lord, to, uh, to enjoy this weird chance to be um, together whilst apart from each other. And you use it to encourage us and equip us um, and strengthen us, Lord, envision us in how we can be better used to serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Great. Um, just a quick bit of bookkeeping. So I emailed out earlier today a handout um, and also the resource, the Word One to One resource. Um, it's not essential that you've got it. We should be able to cope if you haven't been able to get hold of it. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to go into breakout rooms a bit later. If you were, if you've been able to download the resource, um, the one-to-one -one resource, and would feel confident sh screen sharing in a room later, could you just um, message me just privately, or oh, it doesn't have to be private, just on the, on the chat function. Just let me know that you mm -hmm. would be happy to do that, and I'll try and make sure that each room has got someone, so that when you're in the breakout rooms, you can see the notes. Does that make sense? And so, if you have a look at that. Um, Great, thanks very much. So um, this evening is, this is, this is uh, in a sense, the shortest Lent course ever. So we normally try and do something in Lent mm -hmm. that is just a little bit different that brings everyone together. Mm -hmm. um, and we managed a two session thing last year on sharing your story. Well, this is a, this is a one off um, because of all kinds of constraints that we're under at the moment. But I hope it'll be useful and the chance to do something that's a bit different. And it's, it's kind of come out of a discussion that took place at PCC. Back in January, I was asked on the church committee mm -hmm. when we were doing kind of a review of our evangelism, what I thought was our greatest need. Um, what would I most like to see happen in the church? Um, how would I like us to move forwards? And this session has kind of come out of that. Um, but I want to start, if I can, just with a question I put on the handout, which is what I wonder what our hopes are for the year ahead. Um, I guess you can think about that in terms of your hopes personally. Um, it may be uh, that you're hoping to see family or friends. You're hoping to be able to get back to whatever cricket club or whatever it is that you, you were able to play in in the past that isn't, isn't around. Maybe you can go and watch live sport again. There may be many hopes. But I wonder what our hopes are as a church. And that, again, there'd be different answers that we could have about that question. Well, I guess we hope uh, to be back to be able to meet normally in our services. Uh, mm -hmm. We hope that we can welcome Henry and that he can have a great start to his ministry here. Maybe we're hoping to have a, a really encouraging weekend away and a chance to be together with friends um, who we've not spent time with. Um, but I wonder whether there's an, there's, a, there's an even greater hope that we can have, which is um, captured in Acts 6 verse 7. And let me just read um, this verse. It says, so the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. Um, that's Jewish priests. I mean, I guess we might hope that many Anglican priests would become obedient to the faith. Well, that's a different matter for a different day. The, um, yeah. the, uh, that wasn't in my scripts. That didn't, um, so um, I, I love the book of Acts. I don't know if you've ever sat down and just read it through. Um, I don't know if you do that and just read through a, a, chap, a book of the Bible. But it, it's a very exciting story about how you, you move from this little group of pretty weak um, men on the whole uh, in chapter one uh, and then there's again there's, there's lots of women with them as well um and then the lord jesus leaves them but then you have 28 chapters where there's this kind of explosion and christians emerge all over the mediterranean that the roman empire begins to be taken over by these christians you get churches appearing in all kinds of places and the book of Acts charts how that happens. And of course, we're, we're downstream of that. Like it doesn't stop at the end of Acts 28. Churches, Christians have kept growing for 2000 years. It's, it's a very exciting picture that we're given of, of a church that is dynamic and growing. Mm -hmm. And I guess our hope for the year must be that we are a growing church. But what I want to just pull out 
um, from this verse is how churches grow. I'm, I'm really struck by the way, um, a number of times in Acts, Luke describes the growth of the church in this way. He says, so the word of God spread. And see, the churches grow as the word of God spreads. So as people receive the, the news about Jesus, the gospel, as they hear the explanation about his death and his resurrection, that he is now risen as Lord, and as they repent and believe, and as they, as they come to read his word in the Bible and, and believe it, that is how they become Christians. That is how the church grows. And this verse tells us that the, that the word of God is, is at work. It's interesting, isn't it, how it describes that the word of God spread. It's, we're told elsewhere in Hebrews 4 that the word of God is living and active, which reminds us that in the early days of the church, it wasn't that they had some really good kind of recruiting sergeants who were good at drumming up numbers. It was the word that was at work spreading. And it's the same today. It's not for us to be kind of really kind of attractive, charismatic people who can attract a large crowd to follow us. We want to see the word of God spreading into people's lives. And I think this verse tells us that the word of God is powerful as well, because, of course, it was it was breaking into a culture that didn't want it in Jerusalem. I mean, they killed Jesus. They didn't want the gospel. Mm. But it spread. And as you read Acts, the word of God spread into Gentile cultures where to acknowledge Jesus as Lord was a rejection of Caesar as your Lord, as your God. It, 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 it spread, the word of God spread into that culture. The word of God was powerful to spread into cultures that were hedonistic and deeply immoral. And yet people were pulled out of lifestyles that, that were far more kind of um, uh, ungodly than, than, we, than, than in our world today. But the word of God spread. And, so, and that is what's happened for 2000 years. And I hope that's our, that's our ambition, our, our, our hope. For St. David's and, and the North Cotswolds is that the word of God would spread among us. Now, how does the word of God spread? And I think the Bible says that it happens um, through people. It happens as, as the Bible is explained. And I've heard it helpfully described as the fact that the word of God is spread through Bible teachers. So people who are particularly identified by the church, maybe are gifted and set aside to spend their days studying and teaching the bible um i guess that would be our, our clergy and maybe a little bit wider than that our people like um, our youth leaders and such like but it's also spread through bible sharers and they don't like that is normal christians that 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 isn't odd christians like ian and myself um who have a very peculiar job and a strange nine to five or whatever <laughs> hours we do um, that's just normal Christians who are able to share the word of God with their friends, with their neighbours. That's how the Bible grows. That's how people become Christians. And that, I guess, should be our hope, is that as a church, we're not just relying on a few people on a Sunday in a pulpit who can preach the Bible, but we want, as a, as a family, to be able to share with others um, what we've discovered about the Lord Jesus Christ. That is a very attractive picture, I think, of a church. That's a healthy church that's growing in that kind of organic way. The reality is, I guess, it feels a bit daunting. And there are various things that get in the way of, of, of us actually living out that picture of us sharing the Bible with others. Um, I suspect a lot of us can feel daunted, maybe even a little bit scared by the idea of sharing our faith um, with others. Um, I put down on my handout a number of questions or objections that I think can get in the way of people like us feeling able to share the Bible with people. Um, I think, uh, so the second question I put down, I've put down, I feel scared, which I think is a kind of a catch-all that gets in the way of lots of things. Actually, to be fair, most... Um, sharing of our faith does involve a little bit of risk it does involve a bit of crossing a pain barrier because you're you're you don't know how your friend is going to react um often we can be more scared about it than we need to be uh, 
but there is always a little bit of fear and there's, there's always a little bit of needing to rely on God and to, to cry out to him for him to give us the courage that we need. But I think there are a number of genuine questions that we can have. So what do I say? What do I have to say to people? We looked last year about the idea that we can share our own story, which is a, a great step in. People love to hear our stories as we talk about um, how God's been at work in our lives. But this year, I want to think about how we share his story. See, actually, we've been given the Bible. We've been given the most wonderful gifts, the kind of the, a, a priceless birthright of every Christian. The, the words of God. And that, in a sense, is what we want to share with people, isn't it? We don't have to come up with anything clever. We don't have to come up with wonderful, sophisticated philosophies or even clever answers to their questions. We just want to share the Bible with them. Um, but I think sometimes we can think, I don't, I don't feel confident mm -hmm. sharing the Bible yeah. with people because they'll ask me questions. And I don't know it very well. I don't know the answers. Mm -hmm. I, won't, I won't know how yeah. to handle yeah. the Bible. Yeah. I think that's a very, in some ways, that's a very understandable and a very fair question that we can ask. Uh, because we want to share the truth, not just our own ideas and certainly not on our own, certainly not our own mistakes. But what we're going to look at this evening, this resource, I think is brilliant at saying to us, you don't need to be an expert in the Bible. You don't need to have all the answers. All you need to do is to be willing to, to get the Bible open and let them meet Jesus on his terms, in his word. And sometimes it can be helpful to our friends if they if they don't feel like we're the expert who's come to kind of preach at them, if we've just come alongside and said, hey, I'd, why don't we have a little look at what, what, what is the most important thing in my life? Let, let's have a look at the Bible together. Sometimes people, I think, the third question, uh, objection, people say, I don't think my friends would want to have a look at the Bible. I don't think they'd want to kind of look, read a little bit of the Bible with me. Well, that's, that's fair. There'll, there'll, be, there'll be plenty of friends and family, I guess, um, for whom that would be a very odd idea to them. But there will be others who we know, or maybe who will know in the future, who would be open to having a look at the Bible. It, it is the best-selling book in history. It is a book that has changed the world. And it is the book on which I trust your life is built. And if they're interested in you, they probably are interested in what the Bible means to you. They probably are intrigued by that. There's a lot of people, I think, who are intrigued by spiritual questions, but who don't really feel they've got an opportunity to explore them. And it's a shame if we decide in advance that they don't want to explore these questions. So we'll, I, we'll ha have a little look at how we can maybe feel a bit more confident um, at sharing the Bible, which is, I think, the fourth objection I think that can get in the way of it is I don't know how to do it. And I totally sympathise with that. You may have sat here kind of, in a sense, nodding your head thinking, well, this all sounds great, but how on earth can I expect to be able to sit and look at the Bible with it? That just feels a million miles from where I am. Well, we could talk a bit about practicalities, but what I want to focus on this evening is a resource that's been put together um, by some churches in London that is meant to address exactly that issue, which is how, how can I feel confident um, and, and comfortable in sharing the Bible with a friend. Um, it's something called the Word One to One. Um, I've shared the website with you. We're going to watch a little video now of, of a lady um, who um, she's a normal member of a church in London. Um, or oh, she's got four kids. I think she's pretty extraordinary. Uh, who's just talking about her experience um, when she first had a go at trying to use this resource to meet up with a non-Christian friend. Does that make sense? I'm going to share my screen. Uh, Share screen, uh, share screen, <laughs> optimize for video. Great, has that come up as with a lady? Yes, yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. Great, here we go. Um, I'm Claire, I live in London with my husband Dave and our <laughs> four children um, who are between the ages of one and six. When I first saw the word one-to-one mm -hmm. -one material, I was a little bit skeptical um, because I thought to me it would feel quite unnatural to sit there and read because the way it's laid out it's a little bit like a script so I thought it would feel quite unnatural to sit here and read a script to somebody um, historically when I had met up with uh, non-Christian friends it had always been very much a bible study kind of question and answer scenario so this material was very different um, 
but I'd heard some good stuff about it. And when uh, my friend expressed interest in it, um, I knew she didn't have any mm. um, Christian background or knowledge at all. So it seemed like it would be a good resource to use because I, it was going to her with no expectations, not expecting her to have any answers. Mm. Um, and so it would be very accessible. And so we started reading it together and I was really surprised by how it didn't feel weird at all and how um, over time it just started prompting very natural conversations that would just come out of it anyway um, to the point now where it's not at all me just reading at her but we chat kind of as we go through it. Um, but what it does do really well is give you everything you need to share the gospel with someone to actually not just do that but open up god's word and um explain it to someone in a way that when you're in a situation with someone who's asking questions sometimes we feel nervous sometimes we feel like the answers go out of our heads um and we can't mm -hmm. think of what to say and we kick ourselves afterwards because it all comes back to us um what is brilliant about this resource is that mm -hmm. everything is here we were starting to see together as we worked through it um, who Jesus was, what he came to do, um, what that means for us. And it's just been a really natural way for her to understand the Bible. It wasn't me preaching at her or um, telling her what I thought. It was letting the Bible do the talking. Um, and that's incredibly, um, that's just such a gift. Um, to have that resource in your hands. And it means anybody can use it. You don't have to be someone who feels like you can explain the gospel clearly. You don't have to be someone who's really brave at talking to people about Jesus. You just need to be someone who can read very basic English and just chat to a friend, invite them to read the Bible with you. Ask them if they've ever looked at it. Ask them if they've ever um, read what Jesus said for himself. Um, and when you do it that way, it's, it's both of you approaching what feels like a more neutral um, book together um, and letting Jesus do the talking. But she wasn't reading a Bible then. No. Great. Um, I need to stop sharing. Okay. So um, mm -hmm. that was Claire uh, talking about her oh, using... Oh, sorry, Anna, we've skipped on the next video. Um, Claire, talking about how she has used this resource um, with friends. Now, I'm going to take a, a few minutes now just to walk through this resource and um, to show you what it is. And then I'm um, going to try and put us into rooms to have a look at it ourselves. Does that make sense? Does anybody want to ask a question at this point about anything that I've said so far it may or not make much sense to you at mm. all so um mm. if that's the case then you may it may be better just have a look at the resource but if there's anything that just needs clarifying so where there's it's hard to know there's not it's hard is, to, gone is the book you're showing just the older version of the one we've got yeah so the one that I linked online I think it's got a blue cover so this is a slightly older version yeah that's right okay great so this resource, the Word One to One, was, has been developed by um, some churches in London to be a resource that is, makes it as easy as possible to meet up in an informal way, maybe in a coffee shop or in a home or wherever, wherever you'd like to, um, with one or a few other people, ideally probably one to one. And just to look at, um, these are designed for John's Gospel, um, so that you, uh, this has got Three, this has got John chapter one in it, but it's laid out in a way that makes it easy, hopefully, for someone who's not familiar with the Bible to start to have a look at the Bible. So shall we have a little look at how the resource is laid out? Let me um, share the screen again. Uh, and. Oh, hang on. Sorry, I'll get it in a moment. Um, get my pen. There we are. Oh, do you want to borrow this one? Huh? Okay, so has has the screen come up there with yeah. the word one to one? Okay, so yep. if you've been able to download it, then you might have had a look at this already. It's a booklet. You can buy the booklet 
but they also make the resource available um, online. So you, you can just um, sign up and download it as, a, as I've given you the first one. Um, if you if you open it up, um, you come to the first page, which just gives you the kind of the blurb. But then when you get in, there's a, into page four, there's like an, an introduction that just explains how the book works. Um, so uh, I don't know whether you can see my mouse, um, but the top left hand box, it talks about the journey through John's gospel with a friend, which is how they pitch the idea of um, what you're offering to someone. I really like that language that, that it's, I mean, they kind of, it's playing into the language of our day, isn't it? About spiritual journeying and going, on, going with a friend, exploring John's gospel. Um, the word one-to-one -one helps you to get started with the Bible. And they just explains how the resource is laid out. So it says on the left is text from John's gospel, one of the books of the Bible. Um, and it tells us a couple of things about this. So John lived with Jesus for three action-packed years. We'll read the account of what he saw and heard during that time. And then the arrow takes across to, um, to some notes in the blue. On the right are notes to chat through with a friend. They highlight the main points from the Bible text and provide background from the rest of the Bible. Many have found that talking these through with a Christian friend one-to-one -one, when a small group has been a real help a on Christian. their own spiritual journey so this is written so that a non-christian could read this or you might um give this to a non-christian friend or, or, or look at it with them and say uh, this this is what i'm suggesting that we might have a look at what do you think and you might even read through this little bit together um and so that they don't feel, they don't feel like they're the um the, the kind of the target this is written for them to, to engage with and that you are the friend if you're a Christian who's coming along and saying hey should we look at this together let's just look at how session one works and I'll it, this is going to be a bit artificial because I'm just sat here in my study I can't even see any of you anymore because I've I'm showing my screen um, but I'm gonna just talk as though as close as I can to how I would do this with a friend um, and it would depend upon the nature of the friendship and how confident the person was whether this was mainly me almost just talking through it and just occasionally giving space for them to chip in or whether it's more of a conversation. And the ideal is a conversation. But one of the things that the people who have put these notes together have discovered is that people take a little bit of time to get their confidence to, to to talk honestly some people are naturally very confident and will just have a conversation about anything others particularly they're, they're frightened about being put on the spot and expect to know the answers and it takes them a while to get a feel for the kind of discussion that they can have so this is designed in a way that's quite different from um kind of a christian explored group or maybe a, a bible study group where you ask a question someone you're expecting answers um, it's, it, you'll see in a moment how it's written in quite a different way so um, let's assume that we're starting. So um, let's assume that I've got um, Buzz here with me in the room. We're going to have a look at um, uh, episode one. So I'd say uh, we'd open the book up and I'd say, so we're going to have a little look at um, just for 15, 20 minutes or so, if that's OK, um, at what they've called episode one, which is just the, the first part of John's gospel. Um, and if we look at this book, you can see they've given us this title which says God came to earth. So that, that's, I guess we, we're being told from the beginning what, what the person who put these notes together thinks that this is about. Um, and don't worry too much about um, John 1, colon 1 to 18. That, that, that means John chapter 1, verses 1 to 18. It's just, it's just kind of a reference system. There's nothing magic about it. It just helps you find your way around. Uh, but it says down here, in this episode... Um, I like the idea of episodes. It's kind of like like, um, like watching a box set, isn't it? So it's kind of a TV program. So we're, we're going to watch one one box set. In this in one one episode, John's eyewitness account starts with an overview. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna see some big ideas, and we're gonna see some pretty big claims in the first episode. So don't be surprised that it'll need unpacking. Okay, and I might just say to my friend, say Buzz, uh, does, that, does that make sense? Are you happy to give it a go? I say, well, um, I guess we're being told that we're going to see some big, big picture stuff, and it may not, it may not all fall into place immediately, and that's fine. That's that's kind of what John's doing. Should, should we, should we have a look? Let's um, let's just turn over the page, and I just make sure they can see how it works. I say, so, um, in the white part, 
Um, the bigger word, the bigger text, that, that's actually from the Bible. And um, they've just pulled it out and put it in here. So it's a bit easier for us to read. Um, this is John's gospel. And then around it are some notes that the people who made this um, have assembled just to help us um, help us in our kind of a discussion, just to um, see in the direction that, um, that at least John means us to be thinking and talking about. Uh, just look at the top left. Here. So it says, this is what John wrote. So John, the guy who was with Jesus for three years, um, he's he's written these words. They've been kept for us uh, for 2000 years. So we're going to start by reading what he wrote. Um, so let's have a look at that. So it says this in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made without him. Nothing was made that has been made. OK, so you can see that we're, we're, we're looking here. I mean, that that's the way in which John has started, chosen to start writing um, his gospel. Um, I, I guess there's all kinds of things we might want to talk about there. But uh, we've just got some stuff over here on the right um, that, that the people who've kind of worked in these notes think is a good place to start. So should we start there? But they've given us this title, um, The God Who Made Everything. And can you see that it, they say John is introducing us to the word. That's interesting. And the arrow is, is showing us where that comes in. So in the beginning was the word. Um, actually, yeah, can you see we're told twice that the word was in the beginning. So, I, I mean, this is this is very much of a monologue for me at the moment. Um, ideally, it would become more of a discussion, but we're, we're able to look at I, I've stepped out from the meeting now. Um, mm -hmm. We're able to look at the notes and the, the fact that we've got um, a Bible teacher who's given us a bit of a direction means that we can look at what he says and see whether we agree is that what we think the, the text is saying does it make sense to us we can just kind of explore it together so twice um, let's have a look back into it twice he says the word was there in the beginning okay that's interesting can you see that oh yeah we, we see it in that first paragraph in the beginning was the word and then we're told it again in verse two he was with god in the beginning that's interesting isn't it that he makes a big thing about it being in the beginning um the notes are telling, so what the notes saying, the word existed before time, before creation, before the beginning, which means the word is eternal. And then we might, we might, I might say, what do you, what do you make of that? Okay, and that they might want to talk about whether they agree that that's what the passage says, or they might want to talk about what does that even mean to be eternal? Or, um, and you know, you don't have to have the answers. You're just, you're just asking the question. The, the, what's really exciting is that they've read and understood part of the Bible, which talks about Jesus' eternity. Um, let's keep going. Uh, okay, I suppose it's great to be introduced to the word. They, you see, uh, the natural question though is what is this word? Who or what is the word? So let's have a little look and see what, what is being said here about this word. Okay, well, we're being told that the word oh, is sure. God, verse one. Can we see that? The word was with God and the word was God. Okay, that's quite a big claim. And then next, the word is a person. Okay, see how the sentence, okay, so the second sentence, verse two, here we are, he was with God in the beginning. So this word is a person, you can kind of have a relationship with him. So the word who is God and a person made absolutely everything, no exceptions. Okay, where do we see that? Verse three, through him, all things were made. Yeah, without him, nothing was made that has been made. OK, so the summary we've been given here is already John claims to know our creator. Oh, what do you make of that? What do you make of that? OK, that's the first page. Um, let's. Um, I'm going to stop sharing. God and the word was God. OK, did that? I've got no idea how that felt from your end. It feels a little unnatural mm -hmm. to, my, to me because I'm sat here in my study on my own. That life um, was natural, my but. This resource has been put together to help people just feel confident, comfortable having a look at a bit of the Bible with someone who, who doesn't know the Bible at all. They don't have to have any answers. They have to even they don't, yeah, they don't even have to know what the right questions are because the resource gives it to them. And the idea is that you can sit down, you can just work together. And what a lot of people have discovered is that over time, it, maybe it feels a little bit, a little bit awkward at first, but actually people have really enjoyed the chance to have a look at a resource like this. Um, and explore the Bible. So what I'm going to suggest is that I, I put us now into groups. Um, 
uh, I think, has everyone who can screen share, let me know they can do that. Uh, let me just check the breakout rooms. Um, so I need one. Well, yeah, we know it's Jesus. Uh, who do I, I need to find? Ruth, where's Ruth gone? Ruth, no, uh, yes. Sorry, Ruth, I'm just, I'm gonna put you, um, great. I think every room now has got someone in who is able to screen share. I hope this is gonna work for you. I, it, it may feel a little bit weird, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into, into rooms just for about 10 minutes. And I'm gonna suggest that there'll be four people in each room. So if you don't particularly want to have a go, you can just listen and watch. But I'm gonna suggest that maybe um, one or two of you just, just someone someone takes initiative and leads just working through and just have a go at saying what how does it work to lead through this text to, to read out the text then to have a look at the questions and to discuss them just see what it feels like does that make sense this is a complete experiment if it goes really badly wrong that's my fault it's not the notes fault this is this is a very unusual environment but we'll give it a go and i hope we might discover that actually actually it's quite easy to open up the bible like this with someone else mm. Does that make sense? If you've got a question, ask it now. Mm. Yeah, I printed it out. It's got 34 pages. Well done, Robert. Well, thank you. Great. Let's go for it. No, no one's waving at me. No one's shouting. So I'm assuming we're all happy. We're going to go for it. <laughs> okay. I'll bring you back in 10 minutes. Great, so we're all back. We're back. Wonderful. Um, I've got no idea how that was. It may have been a complete car crash, but I were there any are there any <laughs> reflections on um and this may be a mad idea to ask people to contribute as well in a 28 person screen. <laughs> One thing we said was it. In and it, Caroline, Max. Caroline, not my Caroline, but the other Caroline, said, it. said it's choosing mm -hmm. John's gospel. John, the beginning of John's gospel is a very dense, yeah. <laughs> and there's there's a lot there, and there's and of course you very quickly get into John the Baptist and John, who of course mm -hmm. are the same person. Yeah, so there's, there's plenty to go at, and it yeah. doesn't mention Jesus. We haven't got yeah. to Jesus being mentioned yet, even though we're talking about Jesus. I know it's fascinating. Yeah. And I, I think probably <laughs> when you if you were to do this with somebody who's not a Christian, engage with it for the first time, you might see it through in, in a slightly different way and you'd be forced to ask. Deal with the questions that they're asking. And it is like it's very interesting. Why mm -hmm. does John approach the gospel in that way? I think yeah. you, yeah. Would, you would get some interesting discussions and um i mean yeah it is a very dense start but it's not i think john isn't expecting you to answer every question at that point it's it's it's, it's meant to be a slightly mm. intriguing beginning that's raising big issues that people might then find are illuminated by the rest of the gospel so you're not expected to answer every question or come out of it one of the things that struck me listening to one person talk about this resource was that it's slow it's deliberately slow so you're not saying to someone come on a five-week course and you'll become a christian you're saying why don't we have a look at a few verses and if you enjoy it we can do it again next week and then we can do it the following week after that and you're giving them a long time i mean i think there's 50 60 studies potentially if they if they really want to keep going um which which just recognizes people are starting from a long way back nowadays it well, if, if someone doesn't believe in God, it probably isn't the Christian God that they don't believe in. It, it, it's, it could be any idea of God. It's not, it isn't that they've heard. Um, I mean, it depends upon the generation they belong to, of course. But many people know very little about the Bible. They know very little about the Christian worldview. Um, mm. And what you're doing just by coming at John's gospel, which seems to have been written in a way that does engage powerfully with people from all kinds of different backgrounds and worldviews, is that you're saying let's just little by little over many weeks just start to dip our toe in the water of what what this message is so that they can 
you're not you're not expecting them to make a response in the first week um mm. you're just hopefully intriguing them that um, does assume that Ben, that does assume that people are going to give you that much time. And I think you might only have one shot at it. Yeah. yeah as, in, as in, you open up the Bible once and, and they don't want to do it again. Well, they might not want to do it again. And you've, you've sort of said to them, you know, can, we, can I open the Bible up with you? And they might go, well, that was interesting, but thanks very much. And then you say to them a second time, would you like to keep going? And they go, nah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's possible. Mm -hmm. But um, I mean, you, you pray, don't you? Like you can't, you, you can't force someone to want more. What you're praying for is people to have an interest. Uh, and I think, I think you do your best. Like you, you pray, you, you open up the Bible and you say, look, the best thing I can offer them is a little bit of the word of God. And if that intrigues them, then great. And if it doesn't, I can't create that hunger in them. Um, yeah. I, I do think it's worth, so a, a few, in a moment, we're going to look at, uh, watch a little video about how you might invite someone to do this. Um, a few things that's just worth saying. It, it is, one of the strengths of this is that it is a relational approach and it's culturally quite acceptable. So lots of people nowadays are very comfortable meeting up one-to-one -one in a coffee shop. Um, lots of people are happy going to book groups and discussing books and ideas. Um, fewer people are comfortable mm -hmm. walking into a church building or coming on a Christianity Explored course. And in terms of where people might be comfortable, I think um, Rico Tice talks about this, that this is just connecting a little bit more with where our culture is. And it's also, it's not, in, you're not positioning yourself as an expert. So in a previous generation, people love to go and hear the expert speak. Um, now we're all encouraged to in, learn inductively and to kind of have our own opinions and discuss and what what this resource does it, it allows you to have have the expert opinion on the text in front of you um, but you're just sitting and you're discussing it and what you're praying is that as they are exposed to the bible to the word of god and actually begin to wrestle with it for themselves they find that they are just slowly mm. persuaded and gripped by it which I guess as many of our own experiences is that over time we found something compelling about the Bible and maybe can't even quite identify when it was that we first finding that we had a hunger for it. But at some point, somehow God's spirit worked in our hearts and made us, um, made us want to hear the voice of God speaking to us. Um, if you were to do this with someone, I, I guess like Catherine saying, um, you, you can't force someone to keep wanting to do it. Um, I, I think it is mm. relational. So if I was meeting up with someone, I, I would only maybe, mm. exp I don't know, if you're meeting up for 45 minutes, then half that at most would be in the Bible. And the rest of it would just be chatting about life and talking to each other. You, you'd end, like, you, you it's, keep it a bit shorter rather than longer. That's absolutely fine. You don't, need to, you don't even need to finish each session if you don't want to. Um, and it is good to say at the end, just what did you make of that? Like, if there are things I could have done that would be helpful, then let me know. But what did you make of it? Like, would you like to do it again? And pray that they do i mean but you, you, <laughs> there's no point forcing them and uh and if they're not sure say we could we could leave that we come back to you in a bit I, I can ask you again when life's a bit simpler and life's hard like you want to be compassionate mm -hmm. you don't want to be trying to force feed someone mm -hmm. um you are making it clear that it matters to you by the fact that you're even offering it should we watch a video i'm going to watch we're going to just going to watch some two men chatting about how they go about inviting them to do it and um this isn't, as they say, they haven't got the perfect way of kind of persuading someone to open the Bible with them. And some of the some of the things they talk about, I'm not sure I would do, but just going through the process of thinking, how do you invite someone to look at the Bible with you is a question worth pondering. So I'm going to share the screen again. Uh, great. Does that come up? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I've seen this. There's been a number of different ways that I've, I've done that. The actual format changes uh, in the situation that you're in. Uh, so, for example, um, a friend of mine who's, who I know is not a believer, uh, I said to him, I said, I know you don't believe this, but have you actually read what John wrote? Uh, and if not, would you like to? Uh, and amazingly, he said, yeah, yeah, I would. You know, so we've, we've looked through that together, which has been brilliant. Uh, a friend that I, was, uh, I knew really well, I just said, look, why, why don't you read this? Like, you'll like it, you'll enjoy it, it'll be good fun, uh, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. 
uh, and just making it as varied as possible. There was a guy that I knew that had a little bit of Bible knowledge, um, and I said to him, I said, would you like to read the gospel with me and just see what you think? Um, and he said, yeah, uh, I've read the gospels and I don't believe them, and I'm not sure why I don't believe them. Uh, so yeah, I'd like to meet. So I've, I've just tried to keep it as kind of natural in the situation and gauge the, the relationship and how well I know the person uh, and just use that kind of simple structure, the invitation, uh, and just tailor that to the, the different situation. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. I think that's, um, I think that's so helpful to think mm -hmm. about maybe where you are in the stage of a relationship uh, with somebody, how well you know them, uh, whether it's from a family member or a, or a, or a colleague or a friend. Uh, and like you, um, I don't try and use one set way of, of doing things. I'm trying to be conversational uh, with my friends and running off the back of that conversation. Um, so sometimes the invite can be incredibly bold. I might think it's right to actually share the gospel uh, with that person, depending on the conversation, and then say to them, hey, you know, that's a really big claim. Uh, have you been interested in, in, in listening to Jesus, in looking at what, ha what he had to say? We've got these notes. Um, you know, I think you might, I think you might find it interesting. Uh, or I might be feeling particularly timid on a day. Um, so I might simply just have a copy of the, the book in front of me. Uh, and, if they, and if they look at the book, um, I might pick it up and say, hey, do you know, I'm reading this with a few other people. Uh, it takes you through uh, a book of the Bible called John's Gospel. You know, I'm wondering if you'd be, if you'd be interested in, uh, in, in, in taking a look. Um, or there may be situations where one of my friends has, has, has shared something about what's going on in their life. Mm. And, um, yeah, I think often sometimes there's, there's a bit of a something happens and therefore actually it leads into therefore this is a good time to, to be asking. So. Yeah, absolutely. So if they, they might have a particular area um, you know, that, they're, that they're struggling with or they've opened up about and that might be an area in my life where Jesus has really helped me. Um, so I can just um, share a little bit about how Jesus has, has helped me with that and, and then again hold out the offer. Um, maybe you want to, to, to meet him if you ever considered uh, what he had to say. I think he'd really be able to, uh, to help you with this. Um, you know, would you like to take a look at this book with me? How do you find that if people are sort of kind of on the cusp, if you like, they're not quite yes and they're not quite no, how do you deal with that in a conversation? Yeah, good, good question. So at, it's at that point, I might um, just say to them something along the lines of, um, you know, it's the best-selling book that's ever been in print. Um, you know, there's got to be some, some good stuff in it. Um, and um, I wonder if at any point in your, in your adult life, um, you've thought about taking a look at the Bible. Uh, and in nearly every case when I say that, people admit to me that, yeah, they have been interested to take a look at the Bible at some point in their life. Um, so I can say to them, well, why not with me? Um, it's 30 mm. minutes, you know, it's 18 sentences, like what have you got to lose? Yeah. Um, why, don't you just, um, why don't you just take a look? Mm. Great. Uh, mm. I, I, I find that a helpful video. I, I find it helpful, mm. I think, I mean, they're, they're, they're really warm and gentle guys, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Even though they've got no hair. Um, although, <laughs> but uh, they, um, they just clearly care about their friends. And I love the fact they're not embarrassed about inviting someone to have a look at the Bible with them. Um, they've got confidence that what they have found in the Bible is wonderful and is, is, a, great, is a great thing they want to share. Um, and they, they want to offer it, but they, but they know they can't force someone. They're just trying to make it as easy as possible. I think it is just worth trying to find turns of phrase and language that you feel comfortable with that is natural for you that you're you're able to use to say to someone hey i mean mm -hmm. yeah i like um this what i found in the bible has really changed my life um I, you probably know that it's made a big difference to me um have you ever have you ever been intrigued by that like would you like to have a look at it with me um or just finding fra phrases that you feel comfortable with so that when the opportunity comes mm -hmm you've got places you can go to that don't sound overly kind of intense or spiritual jargon that might just make sense to them. I think it's worth thinking about that. How do we do it though? Um, pray. Of course, um, the challenge here is that we need to pray. It is, it, is, it is God who works in someone's heart to make them open to respond to us. Um, and it's, we need the Lord to give us confidence to invite them. To, to say to someone actually would you would you like to have a look at the bible with me yeah. it's so easy to duck those opportunities and it's very easy just to um, bottle it uh, we need to be praying 
practicing i mean it's worth just like i was saying it's worth practicing an invitation like how do you actually invite someone it's worth just practicing using the resource and i, I like in some ways it, it may be a few of us at the end of the evening think oh yeah exactly i know i know the person i want to offer it to i feel totally equipped i'm going to go for it mm-hmm. it may it may be more likely that a few of us are like oh this is interesting but i'm not sure if i could do it well hey you you've got the link for three studies um mm-hmm. you'll have someone here in the church family um who you could i, I suspect have a look at it with why don't you just have a have a go just one to one just say can we have a go look i'll pretend to be the non-christian you'd be a christian we'll just give it a go we'll just have a look at the bible together and i'll we, we just 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 get more comfortable more familiar with how do you look at this text um without needing to know all the answers but in a way that just lets it speak to us um i think practice is really helpful so um practice and then be alert for opportunities um we often don't know who might be open to um, taking things a bit further. And I suspect, I don't know about you, I think it probably in lockdown, I've certainly become less alert spiritually, um, but more caught up in my own life, in my own four walls. And just noticing people who may, like, like you were saying there, people talking about issues in their lives and just having the chance to say, well, hey, would you like to have a look at how the Bible speaks into some of these things? Um, like to see how jesus makes a difference just being open for those opportunities there we are that is what we might how do we go about doing this um i'm going to show uh what no let's do what next no 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 let's watch let's watch rico let's watch rico we're going to watch um, rico tice who came to speak to us um last october he's a great friend of saint david's and of a number of people in St. David's especially. So um, we're gonna watch Rico just talking about why he thinks this is a really significant uh, resource for us. Um, it kind of captures, I think, some of the things we've been looking at already this evening. Let me share the screen again. Uh, there we go. Okay, has that come up? Not Did you say, say the word the? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yep. For the last five or six years, I've been delighted to watch from afar as this resource, the word one-to-one, has been written, developed, used, tweaked, and is now ready for use by the churches. I'm delighted with it. It's a wonderful resource to have, and I'm thrilled it's available. Well, why am I so delighted with this resource? It's because, and I think this is genius, it gives people the information as you meet with them one-to-one, but they don't have to say a word. Now they can speak, but they can just go through it with the person they're meeting with. And they're saying, I'm not gonna display my ignorance. I'll give you a hearing, but don't make me talk too much. I'll just be listening. I'll get on top of the information. That's what's great. But you may be saying, look, I think one-to-one's a great idea, but I don't have the (coughs) answers. I don't have the doctrine. I don't have the training to do this. And the great thing about this resource is you don't need those things. You just need the boldness to say to a friend, have you looked at the original document for yourself? Would you look at the Bible with me? And then as you go through, the questions are there, the answers are there. Uh, And that's what's so terrific about it. It just equips you to do it. Do you know, we can't all be Bible teachers, but we can all be Bible sharers. And the key to sharing the Bible is having confidence that it is where the power is. So as I get the Bible open with my friend, God will do his work. He'll do a miracle. He'll bring them to new life. And this resource helps me to do that, takes me through the Bible so that I can share it, and God can then unleash his word in people's lives. Please use it. It changes lives. Mm. Great. I think, I mean, I hope, Rick, as they kind of gather together a few things that we've been saying, I think I love the idea of how this resource enables all of us to be a confident Bible sharer. It doesn't, doesn't expect you to have done three years at Theological College or to have read Calvin's Institutes. It simply says, I'm able to, to let the power of the word of God um, be at work in the lives of people I know and care about. Uh, and at the end of the day, what could be a better thing to be doing? I hope that is our ambition, our our aspiration for St. David's, for the, for the North Cotswolds and for the world is that the word of God would spread 
among us. Um, and that's pretty much where I want to leave us this evening. Um, in terms of what next, I hope that you're able to get hold of the notes. Um, if you find the website, um, then you're able to, you can even, um, you have to sign up, I think, if you want to get onto their full resource page, just give them an email address and they give you a password. Um, but you can get all kinds of resources. If you can't get hold of them, then let us know. We can get, we can get the physical copies of the books um, if mm. you'd rather have the physical copy. Yeah. Um, so we can get hold of them, but obviously there's just challenges at the moment because we haven't got a physical building that we're allowed to go into to have a bookstore in. But at, in time, I hope that we might be able to make some of these things available. Um, so ha get hold of the resources. Um, there's more videos and things you can look at there. Please pray. Um, I, I'd love there to be a growing culture amongst us here at St. David's and further afield that we're a place who are confident to share the word of god and what well, there's 28 screens and maybe 40 of us this evening on here um if in the next 12 months half of us have the chance to have a look at um the bible with a friend just for a few sessions what an extraordinary thing that would be what an extraordinary thing and if over time it just becomes more normal and more natural for us as a church that this this is what we do like we we're excited about jesus we meet him in the bible we love other people we want to help them have the same experiences we've had I mean, like that is so simple. Um, wouldn't that be a great thing? If that was that was kind of our heartbeat as a church. Um, so please be praying that would be the case. Um, and then why not find someone just to just to do it with? Maybe maybe you may know a non-Christian friend you want to just ask straight away. More likely, um, you might want to just find a, a Christian friend. Maybe maybe a husband or wife, or maybe someone who you've seen on the screen. Let me switch off the spotlights. So you can see who else is on. If you go onto gallery view then you can see who else is on here this evening you might spot someone else and you might just get in touch and say hey would you like to have a look at this together we could just have a few more goes at it just feel a bit more confident um have a go and um and pray see what god does with it who knows maybe we'll see the word of god spread amongst us here in the north Cotswolds. that is more than enough from me um i'll 